It's Indiana. First of two outstanding ball games. It's ESPN's 18th season of college basketball. Bob Carpenter and Dick Vitale, welcome to the Hoosier Dome in the same building, Indiana and Kentucky tonight. Well, not only we got the Hoosiers here, we got the Wildcats. We got this place with Robert Montgomery Knight, Rick Pitino, Connecticut, Clemson. This is a great way to start. It should be awesome, baby. I can't wait. 30,000 people and better. Wow. And speaking of game one out of the Big East, it's really been more like the Big Easy for UConn. They go 49 and five the last three years in that very tough league. Well, they've dominated the league. League. They really have. The last three years, they have been superb. But they had that combination, Ray Allen, the Roan Sheffer. They don't have that right now, but they got a chance for Ricky Moore to become a special player. He's got superb quickness. He's an up-and-down player. He's got ex unbelievable speed, but he'll have some help on the interior from a veteran, Kirk King, who now becomes a number one option on the inside as opposed to a number four option. So the combination, Moore and King, gives them some experience. And meanwhile, UConn takes on Indiana, 19 and 12, two consecutive years. Not exactly acceptable in these parts, but they've got Reed, the veteran, Collier, the youngster, an interesting combination. Well, Bob, you know, a lot of people wish they could win 19 games. It'd be a super <laughs> year, but not in Bloomington, Indiana, where they're acclimated in a situation where they really believe that they got to win big. And if they're going to win big, Neil Reed becomes really a vital factor. He becomes now the second guard, shooting ability. He can knock down the trifecta. Just call up Steve Fisher. He knocked down eight trifectas last year against Michigan. This year, they're going to utilize him at the second guard slot. And A.J. Guyton, remember that name, he'll be the point guard. No doubt Indiana with a lot more guard talent than a year ago. Mike Tarico's in the studio tonight. Mike will get it started. Big e by the U.S. Postal Service, downtown Indy, Yukon. An overall record of 89 and 13 the last three years. Rashamel Jones is one of their versatile guys, a very good three point threat for Jim Calhoun. And Indiana needs a lot of leadership from their 6'8, 240 pound forward, Andre Patterson. I'll tell you one thing about Patterson he's an excellent inside outside player. He's just got to get a little bit more physical. But the key player when you talk about Indiana will be A.J. Guyton, the point guard. They're really excited about their future on the perimeter. Jake Vosco, the young center for UConn. Up in the air against Patterson. The Hoosiers have it. They will run their customary motion offense. UConn wants to do a little more pressing, and they change defenses a lot. They're going to start out man-to-man. -man. They force the turnover right out of the gate. Their, their philosophy this year, UConn, will be to create chaos. They want to create chaos at all times, force turnovers, convert off the turnover. Ricky Moore is their point guard, a 6'2 sophomore out of Augusta, Georgia. He was brilliant in a Big East championship last year, played superbly in that win over Georgetown. Indiana, nothing very complicated defensively for the Hoosiers. They're a straight man-to-man -man team. Jumper rattles and goes down from the left side, Rashamel Jones. They go into a 2-2-1 pressure now, as you said earlier, Bob. They'll be changing defenses. Indiana trying to attack the defense, bring it back out and execute their passing game. Neil Reed with penetration, the kick for Patterson, little long with it. There's the first collegiate rebound for Jason Collier, then he loses control. He was Mr. Basketball in Ohio, was everybody's high school All-American. Seven-footer with excellent touch, good footwork. UConn a very balanced attack team. Good ball reversal, trying to get the ball down inside. King and Moore scored 21 of the last 23 points of UConn in the Big East Championship against Georgetown. The only other deuce was Ray Allen to win the game at the end. So some experience back despite all the people they lost. Bosco and a block by Collier as the freshman match up there. First rejection for Collier. Now Indiana off transition. They tried to play Reed a little bit like they played Walford. Run him off screens. There it is, off the screen. Long with the three. Patterson gets he'll it. He'll shoot it again. He thought about it. Now he'll penetrate and go right at the big fella. Reed have changed their look right now, Bob. A guy like Reed has taken the ball out of his hands because of the play of A.J. Guyton, and now he becomes a player who can move well without the basketball, running his player, defensive player off screens. Ricky Moore actually getting the foul. As Neil Reed took the ball right in on Jake Fosco, the 6'11 freshman out of Katy, Texas. 
Bosco also has a teammate on the club, Michael LeBlanc, 6'7", who came from the same high school in Houston, Texas, where they won four straight state championships. Straight Jesuit high school. Yeah, they had Calvin Murphy Jr. on that team, who's now playing at Niagara, where his dad was a superstar. That's Lewis, the kick down to Andre. Patterson can't roll it over the iron, and it's pulled down by Kirk King. Connecticut likes to get the ball up the floor quickly in transition. Little short Hamilton. Bosco got the offensive board. They like Hamilton, a versatile player. Jones has it rim out, and a couple of boards now for Jason Collier. Jones is a big time scorer on a high school level in Connecticut. One of the all time leaders in the state in scoring. Hoosier still scoreless now, two minutes and 20 seconds in. Indiana trying to get what they call good angle cuts on the inside. They had the good angle inside for Collier, who posts really well, but they missed them. Recognition, making good passing judgment is a key for Indiana. There's Guyton baseline left, threw the ball into a lot of traffic, and somehow Collier comes out with it. Patterson can't roll it in, and Indiana is very cold so far. Already 0 for 5 from the field. Not getting the kind of execution with the high percentage shot that they'd like, which will come. Remember, this club is very young, and they're playing the same thing with Connecticut. Play with a lot of new people, and trying to get your execution will take time. Roscoe with a high pick. Jones will penetrate off it. Kyle, you're a good job of helping. And the bouncer down there, stolen by Andre Patterson. Poor passing judgment right there in terms of trying to enter the ball inside. Telegraphed that pass. Indiana team that didn't shoot that well a year ago, 47%. There's a turnover by Patterson. Bob Knight's Hoosiers did improve their field goal shooting to 48% once they got in Big Ten play. So a combined one of nine of these two programs so far. They played last year in the Great Alaska Shootout. It was Blowout City. Connecticut put the hurt on them and won that game 86-52. And you better believe that's posted in the locker room at Bloomington, <laughs> Indiana. That was Kevin Freeman who came in. You're going to like him. What an athlete. Played on the same high school team with Tim Thomas, who's getting all the PR down at Villanova. You can look for him around the iron. Great rebounder, very athletic. Patterson comes up with it. He'll run. Ahead. Guyton gives it back to him. And good back defense by Freeman prevents what might have been a slam to get those Indiana fans into this game. Freeman, a good athlete, can really run it up and down the court, physically very strong. In fact, he broke the record for vertical jumping over at Connecticut. And they've had some great athletes with Marshall and Allen. And you think of a host of players that have played there. Reed for Lewis. Well short. Freeman a touch. Ball is live still. And Collier comes up with it, kicks for he's Reed. He's going to make that, he'll make that. Count it, count it, trifecta time. Neil Reed, he's going to put a lot of trifectors on the board by Tarico. I think he loves his new role, run off those screens. No one used the screen better than Steve oh, Offer. Look at the general, he's saying, I like that, Neil. See now, Deal, you recognize the screen, you came off the screen, good spacing. Open for the three, and Neil Reed, the junior, drains it. Hoosiers by one. Jim Calhoun's 11th year at the helm of the Huskies. Three straight Sweet 16s, but after winning a couple here on this floor against Colgate in Eastern Michigan last year, they went down to Lexington, were eliminated by Mississippi State as the SEC had that great run, but a 32-3 record last year, 89-13 over the last three. Well, the only thing missing from his resume, and the same for Gene Cady, is the fact they haven't gotten to the Final Four. Gene Cady has won the Big Ten title three years in a row with Purdue, and they just have not been able to make that one little entry. There's a little ball movement. Jones is going to put a lot of points on the board this year. He's a scorer. He's got to score his mentality. Bachamel with four. Oh, good hands right there. Excellent hands by Jason Collier. He just snatched that ball. He wants the ball inside. They got to get the ball inside to the big fella. Get him involved on a post. And Number of course, 40. Purdue winning those three straight titles in the Big Ten. First time since Ohio State back in the early 60s. The team that Bob Knight was a member of. As Bob Knight and Dean Smith, the only two guys to win a national title and play on a national championship team. Knight in 60 and Dean Smith in 52. Guyton on the wing. Shot clock is at two. The shot clock expires and the ball goes down. Michael Lewis. He finished second in the running for Mr. Basketball in Indiana. The winner was a kid by the name of Kevin Alt, who's playing for Southwest Missouri State with Steve Alford, who was a Mr. Indiana.
Ron Quencio Hardnett coming in for the Huskies. Indiana, of course, knocked out in the first round again. Boston College got him this time in Orlando. Their field goal defense, outstanding as always. Only the Gophers were better in the Big Ten. Well, Boston College, I think, is going to have a solid club this year once they get Scooney Penn. But Indiana lost two years in a row. First time it's happened to Bob Knight in the first round. And he gets a great entry, but a tremendous block right there defensively. On transition, Hartnett wants to go all the way. Guyton stopped him, but he might have got him with the body. That's the Q-man. That's the Q-man. Monquencio. Hardnet, a junior college player, a Juco All-American from out of Georgia. In fact, they thought they were going to get him at the University of Georgia. There's the entry now. We're going to see the entry inside. King says, hey, I'm an experienced player. I got great legs. You can't get that off on me, Jason. Jason, this is not high school, said Kerr. <laughs> hey, Dick, it's only two-thirds of the story. How about Monquencio Ron Trail Hardnet out of Macon? He'd rather be called Q. He wants to be called the Q-man. He's the Q-man. Has not really played well in their preseason like they expected when they recruited him. They're starting to see better things out of him. They say he's been very tentative, trying to feel his way rather than just play an attack. Well, that's something the Jucos normally don't have a problem with. I Usually you've got, got to try to put the reins around their neck and stop them from doing those things. The one thing with Jucos or transfers, they got to become instant impact players. I don't think you recruit Jucos to sit the bench when you can go to the high school ranks and get a kid who you can develop. So a guy like Hart and it's got to come in and be a vital factor. There's the 2-2-1 two, two, press. Trying to change. Reed angling in from the wing. Stop cold. And then Richard Hamilton fell down. Collier on the floor. IU fans are going to like what they see from that big fella. Andre Patterson liked it. One thing about Collier and also about Guyton that Bobby Knight really loves, both guys are very coachable, the two diaper dandies. Now watch this big fellow, the seven-footer, a high school All-American. He's going to dive on the floor. There he is. He's showing, I'm a hustler, baby. And you know the general loves that. you got to play defense and play hard to play in Bloomington. Evan Freeman draws the foul. Looks like Neil Reed on it. We've got a new entry to the ESPN family. It's ESPN. At the little building, if you'd ever told me, ESPN International, ESPN Radio, ESPN 2, ESPN News, I mean, down at Disney World, ESPN Club, what an amazing, to be that little spoke in that big, big tire, it's really a great thrill to be with ESPN. And that's cool, doing some hype, baby, and I believe it, though, I don't care. And Trick Klaber, who just checked in, gets the garbage for the Huskies. Klaber's a kid who can run the court really well, not super strong. See, what they're doing here with that 2-2-1 two, two, is to try to take Indiana away from its passing game and its angle cuts and ball reversal and screening. 6-5 UConn, just over six minutes in. Kentucky and Clemson coming up later. One thing right now, very early, you can see Indiana has not learned yet how to utilize the big guy inside. That's going to take time. That was Charlie Miller on the miss. Ricky Moore throws up an air ball at the other end. Now Reed with Hoosier transition. Miller, yeah! Great catch! Great and catch! Foul. That is super, baby! And I love it here in Indiana! Charlie Miller's been out with three weeks with a groin injury, but made a great catch. And you have to remember, he's a left-handed player. Now watch this right here. We're going to see the kick out by Reed. Now watch this catch. Great hands. He's a left-handed player. Converts it with the right hand. They want the walk-in violation, but he got the ball off. There it is now. There's the catch. Defensive player didn't want to foul him. Thought he was off balance and would not convert that. From out of Miami, was a great high school scorer. He goes from being the second guard to now the fifth guard, but he's in a comfort zone because they've moved him to the front court. Former Florida Player of the Year. He scored 3,170 points at South Miami High School. Indiana trying to double up down in the post area. Carson stopping and then shuffling the feet. Officiating crew here tonight of Charlie Range, Dave Libby, and Andy Rios on the spot for that one. Bobby Knight really tried to give his kids a positive uplift today at practice. He said to them, let me tell you, yesterday you guys were really brilliant. You moved the ball really well. We had excellent spacing. You really did all the little things I've been wanting to see. He said, we're ready to go out and play and do some things. He was really working on the mind, psychology of coaching. So important, especially when you got young people. Jim Calhoun's Huskies have not even played an exhibition game yet. They'll play one next week, but this is literally their first time on the floor, and they're 
Chris Collier's first basket. Well, a high-low entry. They finally get the ball inside. He's got great hands. Scored 27 against the athletes in action. A tough passing lane, finding the wing. Rochamel Jones got it down after Hardnett got the ball to him. In the end, he's going to have to find a way. Nice steal. Great de defensive play and a conversion. Ricky Moore. Excellent anticipation by Moore out of the 2-2-1. There's the diagonal pass. Patterson. They'll give it up. They haven't gotten anything out of Andre Patterson yet. That was a two, by the way, a moment ago by Rochamel Jones. So he has a half dozen. There's Collier. Now look at him posting inside. Look at the great hands. He utilizes that full seven feet. And there he is. He's a left-handed player with the conversion. Catholic Central led him to the state championship out 4A down in Ohio, from Springfield, Ohio. Moore just feeling his way around. And that one is short from the hands of Hardnett. Huskies keep it alive. Connecticut's got a lot of good athletes, a lot of versatility. When you look at kids like Hamilton, you look at Hardnett and Jones, it can be a very versatile team. They just have to find a way to understand their strengths and weaknesses. Rochamel can't quite get the bounce. And then on the back of the box out man, it's Kirk King with his first. Andre Patterson had pretty good position on him. They haven't been able to get the ball inside the King. King went one stretch last year, I couldn't believe it. 22 shots in a row against Providence and against Villanova. 8 6 game so far. ESPN, your place for college football tomorrow. 12.30, Big Ten, Wisconsin and Iowa. A couple of teams that have been a little up and down, but how about Army? Unbeaten, number 22. They take on the Orange of Syracuse, and then Bama with that great SEC defense against Mississippi. It does happen. Northwestern probably could say bye-bye to their coach. Gary Barnett will be down here at the Golden Dome. Hey, you start rumors down. I don't know football. I should be saying that. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, how can anybody leave Notre Dame five wins away from Newt Rockman? I, I, I find it hard to believe as well. Uh, there we go now. Connecticut trying to create chaos with their pressure. Now go to man-to-man -man pressure. Jim Calhoun's an excellent coach, a tremendous teacher. Bob Knight said that to me today. He said, I really respect what that guy has done up at Connecticut. Neil Reed on the way. This is Charlie Miller. You saw him bring the ball up a moment ago. The freshman Vosco stops him, and here comes King. Oh, That'll yes. be a little easier Hello. than those 22 straight he Hello. hit last year. Mr. King out in transition. His first basket. Outstanding senior out of Baton Rouge. He's changed his role this year. He goes from being like the fourth option to where he now has to become the number one option on the interior. I like their guard play. Moore and Jones are going to be solid on the perimeter. Little two-man game. Patterson from Lewis. They got to get Andre Patterson to score big. He can go inside, outside. Ricky Moore is going to get 35 minutes of action now. No longer playing 18 minutes. Kicks it for Jones. There's that backcourt. And Rochamel has nine. Well, he's going to like playing with Moore because Moore has the ability to break the defense down, kick the ball out for the open shot. I love those kind of guards. Oh, Andre. Andre says, hey, I'm ready to get rolling here. Two straight times down the floor for Patterson. He has four. It's a one-point game with the Huskies on top. He's an up-and-down player, straight player. What I mean with his body, I think he's got to get a little more flexibility and get a little bit tougher physically. King, an air ball off the double team. Vosco a touch, saves it. King unable to save it. The Hoosiers will get it back. Connecticut's already got some early commitments from outstanding players. Albert Mooring from out of Maryland, and Edmund Saunders is going to be coming in from Waterbury, Connecticut, as we look at the summary right now. Starting to heat up a little bit. Started off a little shaky. And remember this. When you look here in a big dome, it's very difficult to get that range as a shooter. The way the baskets are located, the fans are way back. You're not in a comfort zone. Whoops. Got to catch the ball. Neil Reed had a simple pass headed his way. Off his hands and another Hoosier turnover. He just working off a pick and simply at, lost his concentration. And really they ran a double screen. They actually ran almost three screens for him. A double screen down low and one horizontally. But he just bobbled a basketball. Ricky Moore. Moore had that shoulder surgery April 5th. Missed the NCAA tournament. Didn't play against Mississippi State in that loss. Gets it back from Freeman. And he rattles home the two.
They're going to love these kids up at stores. They're going to love Jones and Moore. They're going to be so excited. Well, you know, they added 2,000 seats at Gamble Pavilion. They can get over 10,000 in there now. They can play a lot of games in Hartford as well. There's a midcourt foul. It'll be Richard Hamilton's first. See, that's a silly foul. They had him really going chaotic, as Jimmy Calhoun said. We want to create that chaos. There goes Hamilton, 6-6. Lost in a state tournament last year, semifinals to Lower Marion, and they had a player by the name of... Kobe Bryant. Hey, there's a man who told me he's got the toughest job in the country tonight, <laughs> and I've got the second toughest job. He said, i got to work with you, and he's got to coach against Bob Knight. Oh, I don't think he's that <laughs> tough with those kind of players he has. You, you don't have to work tonight. You know you can just take a break, and I'll do all the talking anyway. I'm the big mouth. You know that. I'm ready, Collier. I'm ready uh, for a breather here in a moment. Jason Collier had a chance for his second collegiate field goal. Oh, nice pass. Offensive foul on Kevin Freeman. Good call by Charlie Rage, but they made the nice look inside, but he didn't make contact. King got himself an easy deuce going down to gut of the defense. Look at Jason Collier getting the 45 degree angle on the entry inside. Watch number 40. There's the drop step. He has got excellent footwork. He, see, he thought it was too easy. He didn't go in and focus and concentrate to complete the play. Didn't finalize it. That was a good return pass by Luke Jimenez. Interesting story out of Minnesota. Yeah, came in as a walk-on. Yeah, they were out of scholarships. His dad was his high school coach up there, John at Redwood Falls, Minnesota. He always wanted to be a Hoosier, and here he is, a walk-on, getting playing time. He's number 12 in the middle of your screen in Hoosier white and red. Well, you know, A.J. Guyton wasn't recruited by a lot of people either. A lot of mid-American schools. Michigan State got in here late. There's Jimenez, 6'3", freshman. Good shooter. Excellent shooter. They gave him a scholarship. Look at look at I love the way Kaya posts inside. I love the way he gets positioned. They just don't recognize him inside. He's got the great drop step, single reverses, gets good angle cuts. Bobby Knight was talking today about angle cuts versus the straight line. Watch number 40 and watch his footwork. See now, look at him posting. Look at him showing a hand. He says, somebody give me the ball. Look, I got inside position. He got it now. I love the way he operates. He's going to put a lot of points on the board on the interior. That's four for the freshman. Indiana back to within one. Kirk King tries to do something about it, but he had no arc on that shot. See, that's not his Freeman range. Freeman almost stepping in the backcourt, and now Dave Libby will say he did. Good call by Libby. He went from definitely from front court to back court. Let me correct one thing. That's Andy Rios over on the far side who whistled him for that. Look at Jimmy Jeff Calhoun. Calhoun working hard. Calhoun really works the side. I see the ball's in the front court. Now he's going to step back. Yep. He clearly still has possession when he steps over the line. Reed from Patterson. Good crash by the Huskies. And Calhoun under there, Collier rather, is the man who draws the foul with some good work at the offensive end. I'll tell you one thing. He's very active on the inside. He's constantly moving without the ball. The most difficult guy to play. Let's watch him right here. Look at number 40. Very active on the inside, attacking the basketball. They feel people that have seen him. I have not seen him that much, but talking to people down there at Indiana that have, they feel as a young player, he's way ahead at this time than someone like a Ken Benson, who was a tremendous college player and played on, I think, one of the greatest teams ever assembled, that Indiana team in 76. In fact, I think Bob Knight's record of going 36-0 two years in a row, back-to-back -back in the Big Ten, is something that will not happen in my lifetime again. All-time winning as Big Ten coach, 11 titles, six times coach of the year in the league. Now you're now with five. He's got a nice stroke for a big guy on the sideline. As Connecticut trying to run the ball up after a conversion. Game tied at 17. That's Ruslan and Yatguru checked in a moment ago, originally from the Ukraine. Played high school, though, in Connecticut. Very physical player. Moore is their MVP. There is no doubt about it. He's the key. He's the catalyst. He's the little engine that makes them go. Look at him work off the ball to get it back. On the wing now for Freeman. A lot of people are going to try to deny him the ball and not let him get it back. Shot clock at six. Freeman had the ball glance off his hands. It looks like they'll give it back to UConn when it appeared that Kevin Freeman might have been the last man to touch it. And Bob Knight's very angry with the call. We're in a television timeout zone here, just under eight minutes to go. And we'll take it with 7.48 remaining. All tied at 17 with an angry night in Indy. Classic presented by the U.S. Postal Service here in downtown Indy. All tied up with the Huskies and Hoosiers in the UConn backcourt with Ray Allen gone, Daron Sheffer gone, 
Ricky Moore setting things up so far. Rochamel Jones will have some big scoring games if Ricky does his job. Well, both of them really have been effective. They got 13 of their 17 points. Better than 85% of their. We're looking at the clock going down right now. Yep. They had four on the shot clock when they inbounded that ball. And Jason Collier comes up with it for the Hoosiers. Over 85% of the scoring has been the offensive efficiency from their backcourt. And just taking a little early look at Connecticut, they're going to be a perimeter-dominated team in terms of scoring. Well, three-guard lineup right now. Harris Mujezinovic is in there. Young man from Sarajevo by way of Chicago. Mujez Reed. I'll and tell you, the three, that's six for him. They better find him because Reed is so active without the ball. I'm really impressed with the way he utilizes the screen and has really got himself in a way of how to get open. And that's the key. A lot of college players don't know how to get open. Michael Watch Lewis Reed. on the Watch five. Reed. Look at him right now. There he is coming off one screen. He says, I should have got it. Now he's going to keep moving. Look at number five. There he is coming off 55. Mouye Zinovic lays the screen, tickles the twine. NBN, nothing but nylon. Mouye Zinovic. I worked all day in my front of my mirror. Mouye Zinovic. Mouye Zinovic. Mouye Zinovic. And it's only the first game of the season, folks. Rochamel Jones out on top. Gives it off for more. Inyakin posting up high. Got Lewis playing more right now. They really like Lewis. They think Lewis is going to be an excellent player for him. There he is, a very tough kid. Forced the turnover. Michael Lewis. I'll tell you one thing, if they truly did not get the ball there, Bob Knight's mini tirade a moment ago might have influenced that call. Well, I, I think it was a turnover right there, but I only got one eye, so it's tough for me to see, so I'll <laughs> I'll go over to you and go to your judgment. Look oh. at the general. I think he's excited about this team. I really do. Talking to him yesterday, talking to him today, he's really, really happy with his guards. He thinks his guards are going to be very good. They're young. They'll be a little up and down. Away from the ball, a whistle, where Collier was dueling with Andre Kleber. And they get the offensive foul on the inside with the screen on, I guess, they get one on Collier and Mujez Zinovich. We'll wait for this one to come up on the board. Not sure yet. You can call him Harris if you want to. That's his first name. Call him HM. <laughs> Hanging. Oh, he got hit. Rochelle Jones really hammered. And Collier, the man they're looking at. Rochelle Jones worked all summer in the gym. Shot hundreds and hundreds of jump shots to work on his perimeter jump shot. He's always been a slasher and a scorer. Used to take a train from out of New York, 20-some miles, going to school every day. By the way, that was not an offensive foul at the other end a moment ago. It was a rare three-second call. There's Jones, as you take a look right now. They got the three-second call before he got hammered. His first 20 games, he was very effective. And then he had an ankle injury, and the ankle injury really slowed him up. And then as the minutes, the minutes kept going a little bit more to Allen and Sheffer, obviously. Hard work by Kleber won't go down. A touch for Hamilton. Jones for more. Kleber's got a chance to work and earn some PT. That was some stop and pop by Ricky Moore, who completely took Michael Lewis to the cleaners. And Ricky with a half dozen now. Well, he did a great job shooting that jump shot off the dribble. Does that really well. We'll see Anna by one with six minutes to go before halftime. And away from the ball, another whistle. This time it's Vosco on Collier. A pair of big freshman centers. Jake Bosco's been so excited about starting for the Huskies as a freshman, he's had trouble going to sleep at night for the last three days. Yeah, he's been a nervous wreck, so excited, making his collegiate debut. They really like his future. You're looking at a big kid there. You can't teach that size, 6'11", 240, great hands. Jim Calhoun, certainly one thing about Connecticut, if you can play, they're going to come after you. They're going to recruit all over the country. Collier with a half dozen, draining the free throw. He was a 74% shooter in high school from the line. 24 is Dion Carson, who comes back in for UConn, See, an all-purpose guy. That's the part that excites me about college basketball. Everyone wants to cry about players leaving early. But looking at the new young kids, getting excited, looking at a guy like Collier and then a Michael Bibby in Arizona, see the team Cleves at Michigan State, and then have all these young players right there, Richard Hamilton. Hey, only in baseball is replacement player a dirty word. That's in right. college basketball, it's something we look forward to seeing. There's that 2 2 1 press. It really bothers them. Look at him play that lane. Great defense in midcourt. Here's Moore, three on one. He'll do it himself. And Ricky has eight. That's creating chaos off the pressure and getting the conversion. Hey, you Very don't think quick. any Kentucky fans are here early rooting for that other team in blue, do you? <laughs> you don't think they're rooting for the general, do you? I don't think so. 
We're going to take a look at the 2 2 1. Take a look at the pressure right here. See the alignment? They're going to try to force you to the sideline, rotate over. Watch this right now. They're going to try to take you to the sideline. Oh, they bring the ball to the middle, and there's the deflection. They try to invite sideline. He makes the pass, and now here's the conversion. That's the key. You force the turnover and get the conversion. Here's the walk on Jimenez, who can't spin it home. And the rebound, Ruslan in Yatkin. They want Yatkin to give him some rebounding, some screening. Yukon by Tuna with 5.20 before halftime. Hamilton with the miss. Picked up by Dion Parsonowski. He's picked up several offensive boards already. Parsons, a junior college player. Didn't get a lot of minutes last year, but he can shoot the ball. Four along with it. Collier a touch. Hamilton on the baseline. Sees a way to get in there, and Collier says it's out of here. And Collier, not a great shot blocker, but he's a big player, obviously. And with that size differential, very difficult for a young 6'6 to take the ball inside on a seven-footer. And, of course, Connecticut gets a fresh 35 on the clock. It's down to 16 right now with 4.45 remaining before halftime. They run a little screen off the high post, invert their guards. Deion Carson, the miss. And a good box out there by Richard Mandeville, making his first appearance of the night. Straight ahead to Collier, had trouble catching it. And Jimenez right back to him. Didn't have the good angle for the shot right there. Should have reversed the ball right out to Reed for an open three. Andre Patterson will check back in for Indiana. Look at Collier trying to own the lane inside. Number 40, watch him. There's the excellent timing. Little long arms, he's seven foot. He says, no, 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 this is Rejection City. Get it out of here. Look at the general talking to Blaze. It's nice to have a big guy like you. Didn't I tell you you're going to get a lot of playing time? Didn't I tell you you're coming wearing an Indiana uniform? Bobby Kremens thought he was going to get him at Georgia Tech. His dad played at Georgia Tech. Yes, he did. His father, Jeff. Oh, there's a little, little handoff. Rashamel Jones with a nice little touch. That's 11 for him. A nice little handoff. They run that little curl move for Jones across the lane. In Yachtin anticipates beautifully. Ahead to Ricky Moore. Oh, nice look. Across to Jones, who had trouble getting there. Now Claver back to Ricky. Crashing back door, and Carson almost knocked it down. It'll go back the other way. I'll tell you, Connecticut's going to be a fun team to watch. They're going to be really with their athletes, climbing on the glass. They look at Jimmy Calhoun says, I like it. I like it. Classic presented by the U.S. Postal Service. Bob Carpenter, Dick Vitale, Huskies and Hoosiers. And right now, Bob Knight's team being beaten on the boards 18 to 11. The Huskies with 10 offensive rebounds already. Well, that's the athletic ability. We saw Coach Knight sitting there. You know, they never went four years in a row without winning the Big Ten. This is year sharing, four. Or sharing for the Big Ten title. And they've lost the last two years in a first round. This press is really bothering. There's no question the press has got them a little bit erratic. They can't run their normal passing game. And, of course, Indiana's last title was 87. Uh, they had a great chance in 93, but they lost Allen Henderson to an injury the year North Carolina won the title, and they were beaten in the final eight, but they had a play with an injured Allen and Henderson. Jimenez in trouble. Gets it off for Patterson somehow. Gets it back. Launches it. A little to the right. Way up in the air. Is that Charlie Miller? Working hard at the offensive end for Indiana. Charlie Miller is a key player. They got to get some scoring on the wing from Charlie Miller and some of his athletic abilities. You look at Indiana only shooting 8 for 21. Certainly Connecticut not shooting much better at 12 for 30. But they're beating him on the glass. 18 rebounds to 11. You look at Jason Collier sitting on the sideline. He's going to be a solid college player. 24 a game in the high school ranks. Six so far in his college debut. And his teammate Charlie Miller to the line. Charlie Miller's had that groin injury. Indiana is going to get a lot of help next year. Luke Wrecker. Look the rim wrecker. He's from out of DeKalb, out of DeKalb High School from Waterloo, Indiana. And they're so excited. In fact, Bob Gibbons of All-Star Sports Report rated him one of the top five players in the United States. And they got him to sign. And they're, I mean, Bobby went on and on about him today at the shoot-around. See, Patterson's got to get tough. He's got to grab the offensive rebound, convert. Now that's the leadership they're looking for. He has to produce for Indiana to be good, is what the coaches will tell you. I love that quickness out of a point guard who runs the ball right up the gut of the defense and puts pressure on that defense at all times. And Moore does that. No one done it better than Allen Iverson. Last three minutes of the half. UConn, 25-24. A club that handled 
Georgetown and everybody else in the Big East the last three years, but a lot taller order this year. Moore short with it. Good work by Freeman. And Yotkin gets it back for the Huskies. And then he's fouled. And Yotkin's a tough, tough kid physically. It'll be number two on Michael Lewis. Look at Patterson right here on the inside of the lane. Now we're going to watch him. There's the missed shot. Comes off. Look at Patterson getting the inside position. Nobody blocked out. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. If you're Jim Calhoun, you can guarantee when he goes over to review with a tape, he will go over with his players how to block out on a free throw line. Speaking of the Big East, UConn picked third in the Big East six this year with Villanova and oh. Boston College rated ahead. I love Villanova. I think they're going to be super this year with Thomas and Allen as freshmen and then you throw on Jason Lawson who could be a dominator and the underrated Alvin Williams. And as we mentioned, BC, the team that knocked into Indiana out of the NCAA in Orlando last March. Well, Daniel Abrams gives him a power guy inside. A foul on Dion Carson. That'll be his second. Mike Tarico's in the studio tonight with our Delta Fawcett halftime report. Uh, an inside look at Fran Fraschilla, who makes the move from Manhattan over to St. John's. And then some more hoop news and notes. We don't have any other highlights to show you so far, but in the weeks to come, Mike and the crew will have plenty of action when we throw it back for the Delta Fawcett halftime report. Well, I spoke to Fran Fraschilla the other day, and he's ecstatic with their recruiting class. They beat out Kentucky for James Felton. As we look at a little air ball right there by Charlie Miller. And they look like they're going to get a commitment from Ron Artis, a tremendous player out of New York. So it should be a great recruiting class. But Duke's got the greatest. They've signed three of the top ten players wow, in the United States. The Dukies are back. They're back. Oh, look at that steal by Lewis. Good anticipation. He'll wait for help. Gets it from Patterson. Will he finish? He'll got kick it to Patterson again. He can make the three. He can make the open shot. He knocked out four threes against Wisconsin. Possible four-point swing there. Hoosiers by two, but in Yutkin at the other end ties it with his first basket. What a great job of attacking the defense. Bringing the ball up the sideline, dumping it inside to Inyakin, and then, getting the good entry for the score and a conversion. And then Carson taking the charge. The one thing, if you're playing against Connecticut and you score, you better be excellent in defensive transition or they're going to get a lot of easy shots. Bob Knight was concerned about nine good UConn athletes in uniform tonight. Well, they did a great job after that score by Patterson of running the ball up the sideline and then getting that 45-degree angle right to the box for the quick conversion, beating Indiana up the floor. You know, you look at the Big Ten on paper, Michigan's got to be the favorite. I mean, you look at their personnel, and they're ecstatic about Brandon Hughes coming in from out of junior college to join Bullock. But you throw on Bastin, and you look at Maurice Taylor, and guys like Track the Trailer. Gerard Ward is back, so talent-wise, Michigan's got the best talent. But somehow, it seems Gene Cady always finds a way to win down at Purdue. Three straight. Out on top, Patterson. Double team there. Now Rashimel Jones goes and finds his man, and Patterson misses to the right, stepping on the baseline. Indiana will have it back after the touch by Dion Carson. Well, you know, obviously the execution offensively has been sloppy, but that's to be anticipated. We're talking November 15th. They laced them up October 15th in practice. But both teams are playing very hard. A lot of intensity. The effort is certainly supreme. Rashimel Jones on the transition, leaving it for more. There's effort, there's energy, and there's excitement. There's the threes out there, Robert. I like that report card on the first night of the season. We're down to a minute in the first half. But well, you don't want to get an E for the night. You want to get an A? <laughs> <laughs> you like that? You like that? <laughs> oh, good defensive anticipation again. That's Robbie Eggers making his first appearance. Unable to hit from the left side was Lewis. Lewis averaged 31 a game in high school. There's Freeman turning, hitting. He's a big-time athlete. He's got that great body. Duke wanted him badly. He said no to Duke, no to UMass, and decided to be a Husky. And Jimmy Calhoun really thinks he's going to become a special player. There he is, taking the ball in the lane. He's wheeling. The nice twist. It's hard to believe in high school that a guy like Freeman and Thomas together didn't win a high school state championship, but they were beaten by a very good, maybe the best in the country, St. Anthony in a high school state tournament. Well, there's some of his stats from Peterson Catholic in Jersey. Patterson Catholic. He had, excuse me, and then, of course, before that, he was in Springfield, played three years there up in Massachusetts. The reason I know Patterson. That's your neighborhood. Uh, that's my neighborhood. My dad's out there in Elmwood Park. So you got me thinking about E's instead of A's now. 
I like that. Taken down by Neil Reed. I like the way you bailed out it up. I'm going to still give you a turn over there. Okay. <laughs> We're going to see the king of few turnovers, Clemson, later on tonight. In the, in the ACC, two straight years, only giving it up 11 times a game. Here's Patterson, blocked by Inyotkin, who's had a good first half off the bench for UConn. Yeah, he's Hoosiers done. will keep it with 19 seconds left. You're right, Bob. He's done an excellent job off the bench, giving him some physical presence on that baseline in Yotkin. Very tough. Patterson's got to use a little bit more of ball fake and head fake and take the ball in the basket a little bit. Once again, straight up and down jump shooting. Three and a half second differential between the clocks. Ricky Moore the steal. Three on two Huskies. Passes oh, nice it left side. Oh, Rasha Mel Jones. Dish. What a combination. Moore to Jones. Indiana comes right back. Right back. Oh, we got a blocking foul. What a, at the buzzer. What an excellent play by Ricky Moore. Just did a great job. A prototype point guard play right there. Drove the lane, found the open guy, dished the rock. Take a look at Ricky Moore now. He takes the ball. Look at his vision. He's got good vision. There's the excellent dump down. And there's Jones with the conversion. But Indiana ran the ball right up the court and got Reed to get to that foul line as the half ended. He was fouled. Huskies aren't going to stick around and watch. They've already left the floor as Neo Reed, 75% career from the line, knocks down the first one. He's got great touch. It's a lonely feeling, though, to be out there by yourself. But he's got that excellent touch. His dad is coaching right now. Coached at Iowa State and assistant at Southern Mississippi. He's got them both. Eight in the first half for Neo Reed. And it'll be UConn by a couple over Bob Knight's Hoosiers who don't come from behind very often, at least not last year. So, Mike Tarico, it's what you might expect on opening night. Some cold shooting early, but things are starting to warm up in Indy. Okay, very interesting, Dick, early in the season to see what some of these kids are doing. And Jason Collier of Indiana, I've got to give him a passing grade for his first few minutes. Well, you know, Bob Knight's such a great teacher on the inside how to get the ball to the interior. But the Indiana players haven't learned how to play with a seven-footer. Take a look at the big guy. Look at his feet. I love his feet. He has great drop step. I love these big feet. He knows how to utilize them. Watch the drop step now. Watch the single reverse. Look at number 40. Very active. Good hands. And there's the conversion. They just got to get him to rock a little bit more. Now we're going to take a watch this guy right here, Mr. Moore. He is an excellent transition. Player. There's the steal. Now look at him filling the lanes. There's the penetrate. Freeze it right here. Now watch the angle cut as he draws. Look at the eyes here. Staring here. He gets right by him. And there's going to be the dump down. Moore to his buddy Jones. Moore and Jones. They're going to love him up in stores, Connecticut. The Gampo Pavilion. On a night, you're going to see numbers like that. Rebounding is a big story in this game. 21-16 Connecticut with 11 of their 21 at the offensive end so far. That means you're playing aggressive basketball. When you're getting up on the offensive glass, you're blocking shots, you're forced turnovers, that means you're an aggressive basketball team. And that's certainly been typical of a Jim Calhoun basketball team, both at Northeastern and at Connecticut. He was there 14 years at Northeastern, now his 11th year at UConn. And the Huskies will have it. They'll go from right to left here to start the second half with a two-point lead. You mentioned Northeast, and Dave Lado was back as an assistant, was there eight years at Connecticut, then went and took the head coaching job at Northeast, and has now come back as the assistant because they lost Howie Dickerman, who's now over at Central Connecticut State and was an excellent recruiter, a big-time guy on the recruiting circles for Connecticut. Let's see how that first possession goes. It's Collier's third block of the night, but staying with it, Kurt King, that's only his second basket. And Kirk King says, I'm going to really miss Coach Dickerman. He said, I had such a great relationship with him. Man-to-man -man defense after they come out of that 2-2-1 pressure. That's Reed on the way from Patterson. Flashing out as A.J. Guyton did not score in the first half. We'll see some flashes from that young guy. Oh, Tyler. what a pretty play along the baseline. One diaper dandy to another. Guyton kicks it over to Collier. Here's more for Jones. A.J. Guyton was a forgotten guy because he didn't get a whole lot of minutes in that first half. Yeah. Got a hold away from the ball. Looks like number two on Jason Collier. Jason Collier is Seven foot, 245. Look at the screen. He sets the screen, catches the ball on the baseline. You're watching a big guy. Look at number 40. So smooth with that left hand. Very graceful. Ricky Moore will throw it in. Inyatkin steps into the game for UConn. Number 10, bottom left of your screen. 
Nice matchup right now. You got Guyton against Moore. They think Guyton could be really a tremendous defensive player. He'll be tested right now by Ricky Moore. Came out of Peoria Manual High School where another guy who played for Indiana, Chris Reynolds, played on a 93 team with Calvert Cheney. That was the last really outstanding team Indiana's had was 93 where it had a legitimate chance to win a national title. And in the Big Ten, as we mentioned, all boilers since then. Purdue with three in a row. Nice little touch, and Kirk King looks like he wants to be more involved. Dick, I would think that's something that Jim Calhoun talked about in the locker room because King was a non-factor in the first half. Right there, he'll get his third foul. So just when he starts scoring, he picks up his third personal. And Jim Calhoun did a little dance on that sideline. They didn't get him the ball on the inside, and that's going to happen. I think young guards have a tendency early to pound the ball to the floor and don't really have the good vision and make good passing judgment and make good passing decisions. Nice now, clear out. That might be number four. Nice Calhoun clear wants out. to get him out of the game, and before he can make the substitution, Kirk King gets his fourth foul about nine seconds after his third one. He is really upset. Jim Calhoun is upset. I don't believe he knew about the three fouls, but he is upset. There goes King to the sideline, gets his fourth as they clear out. Silly foul by a veteran. I mean, you're talking about an experienced player. He knows he's too valuable right now. He can't come over and try and get a rejection right there with three fouls. Not a heady play by Kirk King. Too experienced. That could put down the score right now with King on the sideline. They miss a lot of experience. Connecticut up one. Two fouls in nine seconds. Jason Collier picks it up. Ricky Moore steals it back. He says, I'll go at the big fella, but it's a charge. What a great call by the official. Collier did a super job rotating, squared his body, took the charge. Momentum has now swung to the Hoosiers. 35-34 Connecticut. King goes to the sideline. Now watch Collier. Look at him rotate over. He just stands. Both feet are planted. He's there. Remember, you are allowed to move defensively if you have established legal defensive position initially. A lot of people think, well, you're not allowed to move. You are to get to a spot, and he got to the spot. Very important sequence in this game now for Indiana. Freeman comes up with a deflection. Moore picks up the ball. They become so young right now with King out of the lineup. In Yatkin against Collier. Moved around him, couldn't finish. Andre Patterson with his sixth rebound of the night. I like number 25. I really liked him in practice. We only saw him for six minutes in the first half, but I think he's a key for Indiana. A.J. Guyton, he's got a good solid point guard play. This guy right here, he's got to make things happen. Dumps it off for the other young freshman, Lewis. His entry pass, Collier, then he traveled. He got, a little, he got a little too relaxed when he picked up the ball that was loose initially. What they're going to have to learn to do, and they will as the season progresses, is to get the ball inside, get inside to Collier, and let him use the zigzag pass away to read for the open spot-up jump shot. We haven't seen that yet. That will happen as the season progresses because Bob Knight is a master at breaking down each sequence with, with the film, with the evaluation, and charting each play. Freeman on the wing. On top, it's Moore from Hamilton. Shot clock is at 12. Well short. And Collier with another rebound. Then the quick outlet for AJ. See, I like AJ. I like AJ. I like AJ. I love AJ. Mike Tirico, he's going to be a dandy one in Bloomington. Well, how about five points in a couple of minutes? He's on the board now. I liked him in practice. Love his quickness. Hamilton fouled in the act of shooting by Neil Reed. It's another example of evaluations, how a lot of people bypass a youngster. This kid was not heavily recruited. A.J. Guyton with a little finger roll, taking the ball up quickly. Tell you what, he's a guy who could be around a lot late in games. 86% free throw shooter. Bob Knight loves guys who can drain it like that. We'll see if he can do it at this level after doing it in the prep ranks. Well, if you can shoot, you can shoot. You can flat out shoot. I see guys go to the line and they bless themselves and all that. And if it's Brick City, USA, God has a lot of other things to be concerned about than some guy <laughs> blessing himself. If he blesses himself, that means to me he's Brick City, USA. Hamilton drains both. 
And back in, Dion Carson, who didn't score in the first half, but had five rebounds. And Hamilton, who just got points three and four, takes a seat. 37-36, UConn. So I think eventually Guyton and also Reed are going to be a solid backcourt. And then Lewis coming off the bench. They're playing three guards right now because of the physical sta stature of Charlie Miller. Reed, quick release. Nothing but the net. They get him some shots. He'll be tickling that twine. Excellent ball reversal. Good spacing. And they get the open shot to Neil Reed. He's a guy that Bob Knight challenges time after time. Kind of brings you back to the days of Steve Alford. And like Alford, he can really stroke it. Here's Jones, and Rochamel has 15. He can score. Rochamel Jones is not a great shooter. What he is, he has the scoring mentality. I love his ability to score. He thinks he's going to make every shot. So just over four minutes out of halftime, things are heating up a bit in the shooting department. There's a reach by Deion Carson. That'll be his third. He's so some foul trouble mounting a bit for Jim Calhoun. And an official's timeout. Four minutes and 17 seconds into the second half. It was UConn by two. Kings on the bench with four fouls. Now they're on two guards making some good plays. Here's Neil Reed now going to enter the ball to the wing. And then part of the Indiana offense is to pass and go away. Now look at him go away. Now watch right here. Number 45 stepping out. Freeze it. Look at that screen. And Reed, look at his eyes. He says, please get me the ball. He's got the eyes. Look at him. Look at those eyes. Concentrate. He wants the rock. Steps back off the screen and tickles the twine. Now they go up the other end and they get the ball to Rochamel Jones. He just spots up. They play away from him because they respect his driving ability. And if he can consistently knock down that shot he's gonna become a big-time scorer and he worked on that shot all summer shooting over a hundred a day Indiana with a different story shooting this half they were one of seven to start the game four for their first four here I love the way we utilized Patterson screen Patterson traveled in there he hesitates Andre Patterson's got to catch the ball he's a very talented player he's got a lot of ability he's got to catch it and just explode to the basket when he you're 6 8 2 40 why not he has a tendency to play around when it wants to play up and down rather than go to the goal here's more and there's that palming we're gonna see this year dick that's a new point of emphasis is getting your hand under that ball to gain an advantage on the defender. We're going to see officials all over that this season. That's a brand new thing. Well, they say points of emphasis, and I hope they jump on that because you see that in the NBA. It's amazing. Indiana trying to get some good execution right now. I would try to get a back screen and roll the ball inside to Collier. And the other big thing this year is the timeout situation. Dick and I will talk about that as the game goes along. You're now allowed three 20-second timeouts by not using one in the first half. Both Bob Knight and Jim Calhoun lose one, but they still have two available after halftime. Yeah, you only can carry over two to the second half, and you have two regular timeouts as opposed to three last year in a televised game. So it'll be a little tougher to come from behind when you need to stop the clock with one less full timeout, but you'll still have one more 20. Here's Reed, a little short with it. Good box out by Yatkin, and he had Jason Collier on his back, and that looks like number three on the big freshman. Yatkin really did a great job of squaring his body and getting between Collier and the basket, something you don't see a lot in college basketball. Everybody wants to just go to the glass, but Yatkin did a great job. You know, Jimmy Calhoun, you talk about teaching. You go watch Connecticut practice. They break down all those little parts of the game. That's why you're 35 and 32 and 3 like they were last year and 17 to 1 in the league. It goes back the other way on the travel. The state of the clock Easter on ESPN and the deuce. What a double dip for the women on oh, Sunday. Nice pass. What a great look inside. Kaya with the champ. Good breakdown of the defense with excellent penetration. You mentioned Stanford. Katie Starbird. I can't wait to see her. Tremendous player. Double figures for Collier after that last basket. It won't go down for Deion Carson. Here come the Hoosiers. They lead by two with six minutes gone in the second half. No matter what happens here, the Hoosiers are going to be a lot better than they were last year. And it's all because of guard play. Look and at Lewis. Draws the foul on Inyotkin. That's a guy 6-1 keeping things alive. They're not big. Lewis and Guyton. But Dick, they're going to make some things happen. There's Collier operating on the inside. 
does the nice little dish to him. He finishes. He can finalize because he's got great hands and excellent touch. And he plays with a lot of emotion. I like that. He plays with a lot of intensity and emotion. There's Bob Knight working on the mind of A.J. Knighton right now. Jim Calhoun, Bob Knight's counterpart, gets Freeman and Moore back in. He put a clinic on today on his workout. Bobby Knight was breaking it down with angle cuts on the inside, working all the little parts of the game, how to help out defensively, how to communicate. He said it really enjoys teaching these young kids. Lewis with the conversion. There's Ricky Moore. So he can't get any scoring right now. Now Connecticut, I would extend defensively because they have no scoring on a baseline without King. They're strictly perimeter in terms of their scoring. Rochamel Jones, well short. You can see it right out of his hands. He just never got a real good spin on that ball. Big possession right here. Connecticut's got to come up with a stop because momentum has swung. Look at Kaya wanting the ball. Spreads really big inside. Got it from Guyton. Couldn't quite knock it down. Freeman the rebound. Huskies are running. They love to transition. Nice look by Guyton to get it inside. And Yacht going to mismatch in there against Collier. Ruslan only goes 6-7 against the 7-footer. There's a big difference playing 30, 35 minutes a game than playing 18. And that's now going to happen for Moore and Jones. You notice Ricky's got that left hand taped up. He He's really been giving him a problem. He's got a bruised bone right near his little finger. Shot clock at 1. It goes down, does not go down, but there's a foul on A.J. Guyton. He got that off. I think he got it off before the shot clock violation. Guyton really works hard defensively. That's another part of the game I think is important for a point guard, a guy that can harass and disrupt the offensive flow of another team. That's why Bob Hurley years ago was brilliant with Duke, the way he would attack the ball defensively. They get Guyton with a slap on the head just as the shot clock was winding down. Ricky Moore with his first point this half, his ninth. He's got a broken bone right at the base of his pinky. It's really tough for him sometimes to catch the ball with his left hand. Shooting and dribbling, not a problem, but players will tell you in basketball, the worst thing about a hand injury is catching the ball. Yeah, you can't get good control of the basketball initially. And let's face it, shooting a basketball, any kind of pain in the hand area is going to be certainly something to really trouble you. A.J. Guyton penetrating. Oh, looking nice little for Patterson. Dish. I'll tell you, he has really played well, Guyton. A nice little pass there to Patterson. They don't convert, but he has the good look. Carson for Moore. Ricky, nothing but net. He has 11. From Augusta, the home of the Masters. Well, he and Rochamel Jones are doing what they're going to need to do this year, Dick. Tonight, they both doubled their scoring average of a year ago with their point total for tonight. Well, they're going to get a lot of shots now. You know, they lost so much last year, losing Ray Allen, losing Sheffer, losing Travis Knight. Two guys drafted in the first round. Shepard drafted in the second round by the Clippers. There's Ricky Moore right now, taking the ball, penetrating, using the screen. So he used the screen right there. Really a heady play, an intelligent play by Moore, 21, reading the screener. Daron Sheffer, by the way, is back home in Tel Aviv playing professional basketball. The Israelis, they put a little subtle pressure on some of their players to stay home, offer them big money. And he does, though, want to come back, though, and play in the NBA oh, nice someday. Drive. Rebound by Collier with a good box out. Collier does a great job spreading his body, spreads his body really well. Indiana playing those three guards. Lewis getting a lot of playing time because they're playing really without Charlie Miller, who missed three weeks of action with a groin injury. A grab away from the ball that looks like Monquencio Hardnett. So the cue with his first foul. They really need a cue to give him some positive minutes. He was a Juco superstar recruited by a lot of people. They thought he was going to go to Georgia the last minute. He went and decided to come to Connecticut. And he struggled a little bit in their early practice sessions, but they're seeing a lot of positives now out of him. They said the last week he's been a much better player. Neil Reed. Reed strokes it. They got a big date. They're going to finally play Massachusetts, but no Calipari. Hey, I got one for you. I'll tell you right now. UCLA looking for a coach. 
John if Calipari. Steve Lavin, if Steve Lavin he gets a chance now, he's like an interim, I'll tell you one thing. Johnny Calipari doesn't belong in the NBA. He's a college coach. His enthusiasm, his spirit. If I were UCLA and Peter Dallas, I'd go after Calipari. Get him. There's an attendance on top by three, but there's a team. It's some big, big wins, but a little different role right now. Expectations running really high down at Clemson where Rick Barnes, he can run for the mayor of the city. I mean, he's so popular, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, but they got to start winning some road games in that league. Six and two at home last year. They were one, one and six. seven away from Little John. And so we'll see the Tigers and the Cats a little later tonight. There's that high post screen. Guyton gets over the top of it. Looked like they were trying to clear out for Ricky Moore. Got to get over the top of that screen. You can't go behind that screen. A guy like Moore will just beat you to the goal for the open shot. There's Dion Carson on the wing. A low liner couldn't get over the iron. Guyton with the rebound. Very active. He's my new hero. I like AJ. See, now they got to be aware of Reed. Reed's trying to bump his man. Kaya really works hard inside. Look at him learning how to make those screens. And in Indiana, you better learn how to screen. On top, Michael Lewis. On the wing, Reed. Had one for the left side. Now he's got one from the right. 16 for Neal. Well, he spotted up. We talked about how effective he'll be shooting the three. Good spacing, good ball reversal made that play happen. Six point lead for Indiana, biggest in the game. This is Freeman. Gets to a point where Jim Calhoun's got to make a decision about King before this gets away from him. Her King is. left the game at the 18 21 mark, and now. Seven minutes and 31 seconds later, he'll come back in. Now see the ball reversal. He passes and goes away, spots up. No one rotates over, and he knocks it down. You got to find him. You got to know in your scouting report that he can shoot the three, and you got to find a guy like Reed, number five. 22nd timeout called. I believe it's by UConn, which would leave them with one more. Bob Knight still has his two in this half to work with. I'll tell you a sleeper team. You watch Providence. You watch the job they're going to do this year. Weston Crozier. They got Dodd Shamgod, Jamel Thomas. I really like him. Bobby Gonzalez does a heck of a job as a recruiter for Peter Gillen. And I really think Providence could make big noise this year in the Big East. Providence picked in the Big East seven, second behind Syracuse. And George Blaney. At my alma mater down at Seton Hall, they got a little diaper dandy I love. Shaheen Holloway saw him play several times last year. I think he's going to be a big star at Seton Hall. Walking violation, not a lot of move right there. That's a violation by Lewis. They treat that as a re receiving a pass on the court. Once the official handles you to, hands you the basketball, you're not a lot of move, Michael. Indiana, with that possession, could have made this an eight, maybe a nine-point game. We've got 45 seconds till the halfway mark here in the second half. Huskies down by six on top. Kirk King thought about it. Little penetration draws the foul, and that will be number four on Jason Collier. Well, they got four on Collier and four on King. Indiana's got some experience on that bench with Eggers and also Mandeville and Musay Venet, Musay Zinovich as well. Because my guy Harris M on the floor, huh? Here comes Harris Mouye Zinovic, 6'9", 250. He's a tough kid, very physical. Kaya's got to go out for a moment or two. Bobby's got to be pleased with his debut. See, he's telling him, extend your hand. If you extended your hand with your size against the 6'6", he can't get the ball over the top, and plus you're not going to foul. He's telling him, extend your hand. So he's doing some teaching. Ten like points, eight it's rebounds, four blocks for Kaya in his debut. So almost a double-double. I'll tell you what really impresses me so much with Collier and also A.J. Guyton is their coachability, their ability to listen, their ability to take some criticism. And I'll believe you, there will be some criticism. <laughs> After the make, full court pressure by UConn. Well, you know that. Bob yeah. Knight knows how to motivate players maybe better than anybody in the game. Some guys can't take it. But the, ones, the ones who can, Dick, end up a whole lot better for it. Both the players that play there after X number of years. Talked to Bobby Wilkinson last night, the Black Coaches Association banquet. 
great bank with Cheryl Swopes. What a great job Cheryl did. She gave a great speech in her presentation of receiving a Black Coaches Award. And Bobby and I talked about it today. What a great role model she is. She talked about how she really wants to be a role model for other young ladies out there. And it was beautiful to hear Cheryl speak like that. Cheryl out of Texas Tech might have been the best female athlete I've ever seen coming down the floor on the break. She I, was unbelievable. I told her I would have loved to call one of her games when I won the title. She was just sensational. Here's another Texas kid, Andre Patterson from out of Texas, was highly acclaimed out of high school. Had some good moments. Had a little knee injury his freshman year. Cooper High in Abilene, Texas Player of the Year in 94. He's into double figures with those two free ones, and the Hoosiers lead the Huskies by seven. I think he's going to have a big, big year this year. They lose Brian Evans. He was the only player taken in the first round from the NBA. Now with the Magic. Tough shot. Hamilton with the air ball. Andre Patterson. Patterson sweeps him out of there. The reason they'll be a better club is right here. Perimeter play, guard play. Away from the ball, Michael Lewis with a foul. His third. Lewis tried to set a screen for his buddy Reed, and he got called. For a foul, you can't move on that screen. Now look at Lewis. Look at Lewis. He's going head hunting. He's going head hunting. Let's see what he does. Oh yes, yeah, see how he moved? 24. You can't move. You can't move, Lewis. You got to set that spot. He tried to help him out. That's illegal. Once you establish position and set that screen, you got to stay there. It can be stationary. That's two possessions recently, and here's more. When Indiana had a chance to pull away and failed to do so, Hamilton really out of control, and Mu Ye Zinovich with the rebound. Yay for Mouye Zinovich. You can call him Harris. Harris. AJ on top for Michael Lewis. Reed on the wing. Three won't go down. Good box out by Kirk King. And then the Huskies cough it up at the other end. Look at Jimmy Calhoun. Runs down that bench. He's going to make a change quickly. Well, Jim Calhoun knows his team's a little green this year. Dick, he saw that scrimmage they had. 8,000 fans at Hartford. He said, our guys just were nervous, they came apart, and we weren't even playing anybody but ourselves. So he was concerned coming in. Well, they haven't had a chance to have any exhibition games either. They have a couple exhibitions coming up, so they haven't had that. They're gonna be a club that's gonna get better and better as the season progresses, when they get experience and a feel for one another. UConn's looking at Virginia and UMass in December, non-conference. There's a travel by Muye Zinovich. He lifted his pivot foot, no doubt about it. He lifted his pivot foot before he allowed the ball to come out of the football league coming up later this weekend. Just win, baby. Just win, says Al. Come on, Tim Brown, a Heisman Trophy winner from Notre Dame. Just win, baby. Well, the Raiders haven't done a whole lot of that recently. Hard net foul by Lewis. And that'll be his fourth. Lewis was a big-time scorer in high school, averaged about 31 a game last year in high school. Getting a lot of minutes right now because they can't utilize Charlie Miller with that groin problem at the wing. They're playing Lewis like a wing player. You lead the state of Indiana in scoring at 32 a game. You've done something. He'll be replaced by Luke Jimenez, the young man out of Minnesota. Little Bobby coaching these young kids. He really, I'll tell you, is excited. He was like a little kid today in coaching. You wouldn't think of a guy with 678 wins. Thinking about that, what about Dean Smith this year? Everybody's going to be charting that. He's averaged 27 wins a game in the 90s. He needs 26 to break the Barons record. Eight off rups, 876. And he's done it with such class down in North Carolina. His buddy Rick Barnes on the court for the night cap tonight. They had some interesting times last year. Runs in North Carolina having some good battles. Patterson rolls it in. That's the best post position I have seen Patterson make in the three years I've been watching him. He got down really low. He established great position, wanted the basketball. He played like a star in that sequence. He said, get me the rock on the interior. UConn calls the timeout. And remember, this year, you only get two full timeouts. 8-19 left, the Hoosiers by nine. The ball. Look at him sitting down inside. Freeze it. 
Oh, look at him right now. See, he wants the ball. He's down really low. He's sitting down in post position. He wants the rock. He really extends. Now he really takes it up strong. That's the first time I have seen him really, really want the ball. Look at him right here, 45, saying, Yakin, you can't get it from me. Look, I'm going to want it. That's Andre Patterson. That's the high school All-American that he was charted and rated by all the high school gurus, the Bob Gibbons of the world, and all the guys out there to chart him. That's the guy that they were anticipating here at Indiana. That is a solid player. He leads Indiana on a 9-1 run over the last four minutes. And UConn's gone over four minutes now without a field goal. Their last one came at the 12 and a half minute mark. Well, they had that lead when King went out, 35-34, got that fourth foul. And then they have lost anything on the inside. Mouye Zinovich says that one's mine. The next three minutes are getting really big for Connecticut. They got to get a spurt. AJ! AJ. He's been solid in this second half. A.J. Guyton's given him solid play. Now look at him hustling back defensively. Look at him, he recovers defensively. Did a great job to stop penetration. You gotta love that high kiss off the glass when he gets in traffic. That's a huge three. Washamel Jones with 18. Did his team need that one? That was a big time trifecta by Jones. Now they're gonna go to a half court trap. Indiana's gonna really spread the court. Mouye Zinovich is not a good free throw shooter, but he gets deep position right there. First basket, 6'9", senior. Getting some positive minutes from him. Here's Zanyatkin against Patterson. Trying to operate with his back to the basket, waiting for Moore to move off the ball. Nice then he pass. gets open for the kick out. Got to make that great kick out by Moore, but they come up empty, another rebound by Patterson. That's his eighth of the night. A.J. Guyton's playing with a lot more confidence now than he did in that first half when he went to the Pine, the little Pine City there for a while, sitting next to the general. Andre Patterson, that ball deflected by Yanyatkin and then picked up by Kirk King. See, now King's got to go down on the other end. He's got to really want the basketball. Huskies down by 10 on this possession. Oh! Yanyatkin stopped by Andre. It'll go back to the Hoosiers. Andre Patterson's made two big plays in the last minute. An excellent offensive play. And now he's come back and given him a defensive presence down in the post. Here's some post defense. And Yakin's not going to take it up strong. But there's the size and the timing by Patterson with a little rejection. Thou shalt not enter my lane, says Mr. Patterson. Andre gets a breather. A dozen points. Eight rebounds, couple of blocks. Sitting next to Craig Hartman. Hartman did an excellent job on his scouting presentation today. There's a trap. There's a big time rejection by King. Pretty gutsy move by a guy with four fouls. Yeah, King did a really great job in terms of timing there. And you're right, Bob, that was a gutsy move. Oh, Ross what a Chamel Jones with 21. Ross Chamel on fire. Sean White scored over 2,500 points in high school. He's the reason this is a seven-point game instead of a potential blowout right now. Trinity Catholic High School. Former Connecticut Player of the Year, a three-time All-Stater. What a stroke. A.J. Guyton working off a Muye Zinovich pick. 14 in the shot clock. They had plenty of time to work the ball there. Indiana's ball. They'll keep it. 540 remaining. Uye Zinovich did a great job of keeping that ball alive. Over 30,000 here. They don't expect to have 44,000 the way the seats will be allocated for the NCAA championship. I think Rashimel hurt his leg on that play. He went limping back to the bench for Joe Sharp to take a look at it. Here's Reed from the corner. Strong rebound, Kevin Freeman. Freeman has to become big now with Jones on the sideline. Parsons got to make some open shots as well. Tough move, and he banks it in. His second basket of the night. The first non rational points in a while for the Huskies. They go to that 2-2-1, and then scrap and scramble. Very athletic. But he looked at diagonal, want to get the ball away from the traps. That's Richard Mandeville out there, and a Husky is down, taking a shot to the head. That's Ricky, isn't it? Yeah, Ricky Moore. yeah you can tell by the bandage on his left hand. Ricky Moore took a shot. Ricky Moore. Against the big fella, Richard Mandeville, seven foot two fifty. He bounces up. He's given him a solid performance. Playing hurt with that hand. Had shoulder surgery on April fifth of this year. 
The gutty kid is going to have, I think, a great career at Connecticut. Look at the backcourt right now. Between them, they got 32 points. They got look five assists for Moore, four rebounds for Jones. They've been really effective. They played a solid game, but they're going to need some help from that baseline. They can't yeah. just really rely on the perimeter game. Kirk King has only seven. Freeman four. Hamilton with four. And a man defense in their half court sets. We're under five minutes to go in the first half of our classic doubleheader tonight. This is Neil Reed, and he was grabbed in the paint. It appears to be Monquencio Hardnett. Indiana's got to develop somebody else that can step off that bench to give him some quality minutes. Right now, they're not a very deep basketball team, and somebody's got to step up. One of their experienced players like Mouye, Mouye Zinovich or Eggers or Mandeville to give them some positive minutes off that bench. There's a look at Ron Felling, assistant coach right here in the left-hand corner. He's been at Indiana for 12 years. Now he's, he, he's Indiana through and through, grew up in Terre Haute. This guy's like automatic on a free throw line. He can really stroke it. As There's a look Ron, 12th year. He's an Indiana State guy, former Sycamore. Dan Dockage also does a great job. He's the guy that got all the fame for stopping Michael Jordan in that game when they beat Carolina in 1984, Jordan's junior year. Not too many people can lay that claim. Dockage still walking around talking about that 13 years later. I always heard Dean Smith was the only guy who could keep him under 20. And he did. He took him out of that game with two fouls. <laughs> On the baseline, it'll be another UConn turnover, and the Hoosiers get it back. Hey, you said that, not me. So uh, all you North Carolina people, write letters to Bob Carpenter because Dean Smith did not hold them back. Dean Smith, Smith teaches winning, winning team, team concept. Dean Smith is the reason Michael Jordan is what he is today. We all know that. He's helped. <laughs> there was a little uh, native talent in there, <laughs> a little innate talent that Michael was born with. Down on the baseline, Guyton had it deflected away, trying to force things. Yeah, not a good play right there by the freshman. Rashamel may have shuffled his feet. They did. He, he caught the ball and took a couple of funny steps. Dick, I think he was preoccupied with where that three-point line was. Yeah, he was searching for the line right there, and that's what created the walking situation. There's a look at Moore on the sideline. Well, like you talked about it earlier. It's going to be a big difference for Moore and Rashamel Jones playing 35 minutes instead of half that time. I mean, they're treating Moore on the sideline like he's a fighter. He looks like Tyson over there who's got banged around by Evander. The pride of Atlanta coming up big last weekend. Oh, he was brilliant. Is Indiana trying to get their spacing? Collier. All deflected, I think, by Kirk King. And a timeout called by Freeman before the turnover. 20 second timeout by yep. UConn. Now that's the advantage. You can use that second 20. And by the way, if you folks are wondering, what about overtime? Overtime is considered part of the second half. So those 20s carry over if you don't use them in regulation. Hey, how about uh, Clemson coming up? Later. Oh, here comes Kentucky. the Cats. The Cats bus here comes the has cats. pulled in. Here Ron comes the Mercer. Cats. Ron Mercer's going to have a super year. There he is. Ask Jim Beheim about him. Put 20 on a board in 24 minutes against. Not only that, the margin of victory was better than 20 points a game. On the road, they were winning by 30s and 20s. You know, Dick, some of the ex-Cats like Delk, Walker, and McCarty would watch tonight, but they're all playing. They're all playing. The them. NBA plays on Friday night. Delk with Charlotte. McCarty with the Knicks. And Juan Walker with the Celtics. And of course, Mark Pope is playing professionally over in Istanbul. He's in Turkey. Yes, he is. Pacers told him to go out to Turkey, get some experience. He belongs to the Indiana Pacers in terms of his property. 351 remaining. Hoosiers over the Huskies by the U.S. Postal Service. Hoosiers by seven. We're in the final four minutes. Kentucky and Clemson coming up sometime around 9.30 Eastern. You know, Bob, a game like this really helps your club learn about its strengths, its weaknesses, and you're able to find a lot out rather than playing Cupcake City and really be misled by blowing people out and you don't know how good you really are. More dishing, and luckily for the Huskies, they keep it. Ricky with 11 points on the night. He has set his teammates up with assists five times. They're going to try to get King inside. Collier's got four fouls. Try to get him the ball inside. King got it back. They got a foul before King gets the ball. I wonder if we got goaltending on the slam there. Yeah, they're counting it. They're counting it. So it'll be Freeman 
with the basket on the slam. Andy Rios with the call. Indiana worked against the pressure today in practice. They want to get three guys across the baseline, bring the ball to the middle. UConn hanging in, down by five. Lots of time to go, 320 and counting. See, right now, King's got four fouls. You gotta bring the ball in the Collier. You gotta bring the ball in the Collier. Let him attack King on the inside. There's Jimenez. King funning Collier this time to deny him. See, Collier's gonna want the ball right now. He's gotta know that his guy played him. He's got four fouls. You gotta want the ball, Jason. Shot clock at four. Patterson down low, and Freeman evidently fouled him. Boy, that's a tough foul for UConn. You got the shot clock down to four. Patterson, not an outside shooter, has his back to the basket, and you foul. So here's Kaya trying to get position inside. There he is flashing to the ball. But they got a foul and a hole before. Freshmen are going to make a lot of silly mistakes in terms of fouling. And that's also going to be a problem with a lot of big people who are young kids like the Kayas who are going to get in foul trouble. Andre Patterson. Nice His stroke. 13th of the night. This guy can let it go from outside, though, last year. 43% in conference play from three-point range. Oh, yeah, he's got three-point range. There's no doubt about it. He can stroke it. He was three for three earlier this year, I believe, against the athletes in action from three-point range. Hoosiers back up by seven as we move under the three-minute mark. What I liked is A.J. Guyton has really taken it upon himself to try and check Ricky Moore. He yeah. really has in the second half, and that's not an easy job. Look at him right here. He's playing him head-to-head. -head. King right by Collier, but he can't roll it in. Good move by King, though. Tough break right there, but a smart move. He knows Collier's got four, and he took it right at him. That was Collier's ninth rebound. A.J. Guyton can't drop the layup. That was a great drive by Guyton. He just didn't complete it, didn't finalize, but now he's got to suck it up on a defensive end. He can't hang his head about that. See, right now, you got Collier playing King. you got two guys matched up with four fouls. Moore kicks it for King, a fake, penetration, off the glass, beautifully done. Smart play, really playing with his head right there. Taking the ball right at Collier again. With four fouls, he attacks him. Five-point game as we move down to the two-minute mark. Jimenez on the court trap there. Jimenez playing in the late minutes here. Yeah, that's the guy you want to trap the walk on, but he handled it very I'll well. Tell you, what a great play by Dyke. Right down the line. Sliding, gliding, laid it down. He finished that time, didn't he? And he's already got a star's name, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a basket by Freeman with a foul. Kevin Freeman's going to be a solid player. A little bump, little bumps. I like you, Kevin. Don't bump him too hard. He's too strong. You get hurt trying to bump him. Andre Patterson, Andre Patterson only his second. What a great drive by A.J. Guyton. Comes up empty in a previous possession, but he has the guts to take it. Remember, he's playing high school five months ago. Hey, the Huskies are down by just five here. One of the reasons, though, they're only four out of 14 at the free throw line tonight. A disaster on that free throw line. Jim Calhoun's really got to be concerned about that. They were very good last year at 73%. Well, that's because of Allen and Sheffield. It's another good-looking shot there. Those bricks really come back to haunt you, especially in these close games. Under a minute 40 to go, 62-57 Indiana. Oh, what a nice pass. What a great entry. Give that to Jimenez. What a great look to the inside to Collier, who had excellent post position. That's his fourth assist of the night. Here's Freeman with the fall away. Nice touch. He's into double figures. Don't tell anybody he's a diaper dandy. I mean, this kid's just coming right out the play off that bench. There's that 2-2-1. Two -two down to a minute 10 we go. Hoosiers with the ball by five leading. Reed on top. AJ says, give it to me. Hasn't been a smooth game, but a very competitive game with a lot of intensity. Under a minute. Patterson wheels. Cannot score. And the Huskies still have a chance. Here's Carson. They're down by five. It's only a two-possession game. And a timeout. Calhoun uses his second full timeout. And that's all he's got. Good timeout right there by Jimmy Calhoun to really chart what they have to do with each possession. Hoosiers by five. Two seconds remaining at the first game of the Classic. Kentucky and Clemson later. Ricky Moore, Rochamel Jones need to come up big. This is still a two-possession game.
And let's check out the Hoosiers on offense. Hey, Bob, look at a great position inside. Nice pass by Jimenez, two-man game. Gets it over to the other freshman, two freshmen. They had a jump right on the hand. Hartman should have jumped on the hand of Jimenez and not allowed him to get the look to the inside. Collier so with that basket, Dick. 12 points and nine rebounds. Connecticut has no timeouts remaining. 20s included. Take the ball up strong against, get a foul and take it up strong. King for more. Don't have to panic and shoot the three, but you got to look the score right away to the inside. Remember, the Pirates got four. Good defense by the Hoosiers. Shot clock at eight. Freeman can't knock it down. Offensive rebound. King cannot score. And underneath, it's Hamilton. They cannot stop the clock, so play continues. Very athletic. They do a great job attacking the glass. The only place they can stop the clock is with a foul, and there's one by oh. Hamilton. It comes with 18 seconds exactly remaining. Well, you get down to free throw shooting, winning close games. If you convert on a free throw line, Connecticut really got up all over the glass in that sequence there. Well, you've got your guy at the line that you want if you're Bob Knight. Yeah, this is the guy. If you had to select the guy you wanted at free throw line, Reed is like a tremendous free throw shooter. Shot close to 80% last year. 65 out of 81, right at 80%. His career mark, and that's Kevin Freeman checking out, is 75%. He's almost perfect tonight. Just a big one right here. That's a big conversion. Big conversion. Well, it's a two-possession game no matter what he does, but Knight wants to be up by five here. Well, you want to stop the ball as well. Defensively, you can go to maybe three-quarter pressure. Don't allow him to get the ball up the court that quickly, but you don't want to foul to stop the clock either. That's 20 for Neil Reed, and Bob Knight will call his first timeout. He's got all his timeouts. seconds remaining. He's got all his timeouts. Bobby Knight last year, what a turnaround. They were beaten by 34 by Connecticut. Shows you a different Connecticut team when you lose the likes of Sheffer and Allen and Knight. But people are going to have to be patient with that team. They're going to get better and better. They're going to have a solid year. That was in the Great Alaska shootout last year. Indiana won the first game in the series way back in 1939. But game two was a big story about this time last year. Well, you take a look right there. 49 points between Allen and Sheffer. You take a look at these two guys right here. Look at this point production. I mean, that's 49 big ones. I mean, that's incredible what they had. You lose that much, and you're still a competitive team. But this Indiana team is better than the team last year. There's no doubt about it. And then later on in December, you and I saw UConn down in Tallahassee completely take apart the Seminoles. And Jim Calhoun said that might have been the best game start to finish we played all year. They were then brilliant. they go to the Big East and go 17-1. and one. But they couldn't get out of the Sweet 16. Well, they only lost three games. Lose a tough game to Mississippi State. Lose an overtime game to Iowa. And they lose to Georgetown. They lose three games all year long. They had a brilliant year. I mean, Connecticut basketball, their program over the last few years in the 90s has been as good as any program around, basically. And hey, we're going to take a breather here between games, Dick, and put Mike Tirico back to work. He'll tell us about some one-year wonders. And up close with the great demon deacon, Tim Duncan, who stayed for that fourth year. Scores and highlights from all over the world of sports tonight. Hockey and NBA. Here's more. The three won't go. It's Rebound, over. Patterson. Hoosiers about to go 1-0. It's Jimenez fouled in the backcourt by Rochamel Jones. We may see this team in a preseason NIT in New York City. They'll be playing Princeton at home. Then they'll play the winner if they beat Princeton of Valparaiso St. Louis. So they've got a good chance to make it to the Garden. You better believe that game will be in Bloomington as well. And they'll have a great chance to celebrate Turkey Day over in New York City at the Big Apple. I can't wait to get there for Turkey Day. I'd love to join you, but I'll be in Maui. Well, that's really a great break. You go to Maui, you must know the boss. You must know Dave Miller. <laughs> I don't take Dave Miller out for dinner. People out there, Dave Miller is our boss. No, and I never go to Maui. I never go to Maui. Rafter, he requested me. He said he's tired of John Saunders. That's two for Jimenez. Free and throw Indiana shooting. with eight and a half seconds left, leading by seven. Free throw shooting's been the difference tonight. And plus, I thought A.J. Guyton in the second half gave him solid point guard play. You have to have point guard play to win in college. 
Indiana about to win the first game of the Classic. Indiana by seven over UConn. I know one guy cheering, Dr. Baba, team doctor for Indiana, is out with surgery and is a big fan, and Bobby wanted to say hello to him, Coach Knight. They're about to win their first game of the year. Here's Hamilton for three, won't go. Down to the final second. And the first and the gets the rebound. The diaper dandy gets the last rebound. And that gives him a double-double. Oh, I tell you, a little double-double in his debut. Jason Collier played really well for a young kid. There he is. You're going to remember that name, people. Jason Collier, a seven-footer, Mr. Basketball in Ohio. Said no to a lot of schools, including his dad's alma mater, Georgia Tech, to wear an Indiana uniform. And as the general, with 679 Ws. Tight game at the half. Indiana pulls away. Mike Tirico, they win it by seven. And this will give those young Hoosiers a lot of confidence for the upcoming NIT. And some genuine excitement.